Monmouth Area Chamber of Commerce Citizen of the Year, Mr. Trevor Davies. Welcome. Good morning, Vanessa. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Well-deserved, wonderful group of people on that nominating list. I bet it was so difficult uh, to decide who's Citizen of the Year. You got it. Tell us all about it. Well, I, you're, you're exactly right. There was a great group of people who were nominated this year. I'm very, very humbled to be selected. Um, you know, we all strive to volunteer, to dedicate our time to make Mammoth a better place. Um, and um, very, very touched that um, the chamber and the board of directors and folks there uh, selected me as this year's recipient as Citizen of the Year. Um, and just um, truly, truly taken back by it. Well, congratulations. Thank you. What was so cool about it, it was your birthday, so you ended up having a pretty big night. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Um, my my wife ended up uh, planning a surprise birthday party for me after the chamber dinner, and uh, uh, we left the, the country club there and went home, and I had a house full of people, and I had I had no clue. So it was... It was a pretty neat evening. What a wonderful time for you. I'm so happy for you Thank and you. your family and friends. Thank you. And the chamber did a wonderful job uh, with, with everything. Um, Market Alley Wines, Business of the Year, Nonprofit of the Year, Recharge Teen Center. Now, the cool thing is uh, Sarah's going to be in next week. You guys are planning a little something to take that synergy of these three individual awards and make that a community award we are um we uh went up the other night and, and kind of had a little um powwow with sarah and jeff and we came up with a fun idea um on wednesday um, may 27th from five to seven i am going to be your guest bartender at market alley wines and we are going to have a signature cocktail that i will be serving and all of the tips that i earn while i'm bartending will go to the uh, Recharge Teen Center. So we thought it was a fun way that uh, me as a citizen of the year and them as a business of the year could support the nonprofit of the year. So um, it was just a fun way for all of us to give back and um, we're, we're very excited to do it and it's fun to collaborate with everybody. And it just again, um, it, it just shows you that Mom is a great community and we all support each other. Absolutely, that is so key and vital, that support, like you say, well, congratulations, wonderful people. Um, we have just so wonderful people in the community in general. Citizen of the Year, Mr. Trevor Davies. Business of the Year, Market Alley Wine. Sarah will be in next week to talk about her business. And, of course, Recharge Teen Center. Amy and Jess were just in a week ago to talk about their new summer hours. Trevor, before we jump into your position with the Illinois Funeral Directors Association, for those that may not know you, tell us about your business. Uh, well, I'm the uh, co-owner of McGuire and Davies Funeral Home. Uh, my partner, Al McGuire, and I um, started McGuire and Davies Funeral Home be 12 years ago uh, this year, and um, we uh, uh, both came from uh, different funeral homes here in the area and decided it was time to make a change and do something different, so uh, we came together and built a brand new state-of-the-art funeral home and opened it in October of 2013, and um, we've got a um, crematory on site and um, wanted to have a funeral home that was fully accessible um, for the community that kind of met the needs now and for years to come. And so um, we kind of saw a need and, and decided to go ahead and um, come together and meet that need. Okay. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. And hence your position with the Illinois Funeral Directors Association. You are secretary treasurer, but have recently been elected as the incoming VP elect in June. That's correct. Yep, I uh, was lucky enough. Um, Greg Henderson um, from Pekin, when he was president of the IFDA, asked me to come in and serve as a regional director. So I served two terms as a regional director for the IFDA. Um, which the uh, state is split up into three regions. And so I served two terms as a regional director and then was asked to run for the secretary treasurer position, which moves up into the executive board um, and uh, did that and won. And so um, I was very honored to ask um, the state association um, 
does a lot of work for um, all of us funeral directors in the state as well as um, consumers as well um, you know just we not only um, look out for the needs of um, funeral directors but also consumers uh, sometimes there's bills that are passed that um, you know could have implications that may not be favorable for people and um, you know we work with our lobbyists closely to watch things in Springfield to try to make sure that things that are being proposed to legislation um, are beneficial to not only our profession but as well as consumers as well. Okay now uh, currently tell us about any legislation that you guys have been working on. There has been several uh, pieces of legislation that are very important to your industry. Um, you know one that is really on the table right now that we're paying very close attention to is House Bill 3158 um, and that is the human composting bill. Um, and for those of you who uh, aren't, don't, aren't sure what human composting is, it's called the Natural Organic Reduction Act, which it's a, another form of disposition. So when we talk about disposition, we have burial, cremation. This would be adding another form of disposition. And this is where we take human remains and put them in a, decom, uh, decompos a decomposition chamber, and we add heat and organic um, matter to it to accelerate the decomposition process and then about 8 to 12 weeks later um, after that they process the bone matter and create compost and that compost then is considered fertilizer um, and then can be um, spread onto private property given that it has the permission of the landowner um, but again there's the way the legislation is currently proposed, um, there was a lot of issues with it. Um, you know, we had concerns of, um, you know, um, you know, when when we cremate somebody or do different things, um, you know, pathogens and different things are um, eliminated from the body um, with this process. Remains are never. Um, uh, the remains are never um, to a certain temperature um, to um, destroy those pathogens. So we have concerns of public health issues, um, you know, from a standpoint of uh, regulation. You know, there's, um, with cremation, there's consistent equipment that we have, machines that, that do that process. Um, with natural organic reduction, there's no consistent type machines. There's just... Um, some that people have developed for individual purposes. Um, there's just lots of different things of that nature. Um, again, there's, um, um, again, the process itself takes dramatically longer. You know, when we cremate a body, it can you know, take two to three, maybe four hours at the most. Um, you're talking um, human compost. It can take anywhere from three to six months for the total process. Um, and cost-wise, um, you know, cremation on average is, you know, two to three thousand dollars and human composting is on average anywhere probably six to seven thousand dollars when it's all said and done. Um, and there's just, again, many, many things that are very vague in this bill. And as we see things in the news um, with uh, things in funeral service where um, bodies aren't being cared for properly or different things, um, you know, when we have white or, or gray areas um, in legislation and people um, are left to <laughs> to uh, interpret them on their own, that's when we get into trouble. Um, and so we want to make sure that as we are going forward with any kind of legislation, uh, we want to make sure everything is buttoned up and airtight. And so we are trying to work with our lobbyists to assist these um legislators and making suggestions and changes to their to their legislation we're not saying that we're against these things because eventually you know there's a lot of other states that have adopted these types of things but um, we also want to be mindful that um, you know if there's things that aren't accurate or, or not correct in, in their legislation we want to try to help them understand what's wrong and why we're talking with Trevor Davies. He is uh, one of the owners of McGuire and Davies Funeral Home. 
and crematory, also the VP elect for the Illinois Funeral Directors Association. Okay, Trevor, you threw me for a loop. I was not expecting that to be a piece of legislation, the term human composting. When I think of compost, I think of it for the garden, manure, some sort of a shaving or, or manure, right. if you will. Um, and then the term natural organic reduction act. To me, that these terms get used more in the food aisle of organic produce. So I did not did not make the connection of human composting and natural organic reduction act. Human composting, what in the world would be the benefits of that? Well, and 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 some people will think that it's it is a it's a more um, eco friendly way of doing it. And, you know, um, they they believe that with you know cremation, there's air pollution with body burial that we're putting um, chemicals in the ground and different things like that. Um, you know, there's always a different reason why th this is better. Um, you know, everybody has their opinion and reason sure. why. Um, but again, um, when you take the compost, you're, you, the, what you're left with is almost um, the amount of, of compost would be about the amount of a full pickup truck bed of what's left. Of and, a human? Yes. And so when you take that, you have to have that to spread somewhere. And you can't grow, you can't use this on any area where you would grow crops or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, that would be common sense, but you have to but make it, sure people know that. Correct. Um, and that's where you start to run into issues, is, you know, you have to have a place for all this to go. And you have to uh, make sure you have permission to spread that compost somewhere. And... Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, and there's a lot of regulation that needs to be ironed out and figured out before this would really move. Um, and again, as I said, the bill, when it was introduced, was very vague in a lot of areas. And so we've been trying to work with um, the legislators and um, make the points that we need to um, spell out some things to get this to a better place before um, it, it gets pushed through. Yeah, because if not done correctly, which you're pointing out, there are ways that that has to be done correctly. I mean, way back in the day, centuries ago, disposal of bodies can lead to things like the Black Plague if you're not careful, if you get into water sources and Correct. and all of that interesting, those those places where it can spread the wrong way. Correct, and, and that's exactly right, and 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 that, that was one of our concerns was from the public health issue. You know, if these re remains in the composting, um, when the, in the process that aren't being when, in the natural organic process, they're, they're they're not heated up to the same temperatures of what like a cremation would be, and so those pathogens aren't aren't killed off, um, and so there lies our concern with public health because they have to be treated at a certain temperature for so long for those pathogens to be killed off. And one of the big things was in this organic reduction bill, there was no way to monitor those temperatures for the, an extended period of time in these chambers. Okay. And so that was one of the things that we were trying to um, say to them was you have to be able to prove that these chambers were at a certain temperature for a certain amount of time to be able to know that these um, pathogens would be um, eliminated. Okay. Well, let's talk about something happy, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Wow, what an interesting uh, time. You've seen a lot of changes, though. Yeah, funeral service has changed dramatically. Um, you know, um, when I first started, um, we were burying almost everybody. Cremation was nearly not as prevalent as it is now. Um, everything was still very, very traditional. Um, you know, I hear a lot of funeral directors nowadays say we're, we're more event planners than we are um, anything. Um, but, you know, uh, personalization is so, so much fun to me. Um, making funerals one-off, doing custom things is what um, makes them special. And everybody's life is individual. Um, and that's what I enjoy most about what we do is helping families create those tributes, 
um, to celebrate the life of their loved one. Okay. Anything else you want people to know, to be aware of? And thanks for having people's backs uh, in Springfield about this type of legislation. Well, you know, um, I'll just say I'm, I'm blessed to work with a phenomenal group of people in Springfield. Uh, the board of directors um, on the IFDA currently is a, is a great group of people from all different areas of the state and from all different backgrounds. We have some from large funeral homes, from small funeral homes, from corporate funeral homes, and from small family-owned funeral homes. So we have a really well-rounded group of people that have a diverse background, and I think that is so important. Um, and you get a very good, uh, well-rounded um, set of opinions and uh, knowledge. And I think that's truly so important when we're going to do work and represent um, our, our profession as a whole for the state. Okay. Trevor, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. You have a good week. You as well. Thank you, Vanessa. Citizen of the Year, Mr. Trevor Davies on WRAM 89.1.